Not only are these the same exact glaze, these are also the same exact clay body. The only difference is that this one on the left here is at 1.1 specific gravity, while the one here on the right is at 1.4 specific gravity, and it makes such a large difference. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today I want to talk to you potters about something that most ceramic artists are going to have to deal with somewhere in their lifetime, especially if they make their own glazes. And for those of you that don't know or you've only ever bought glazes in a bottle like this already pre-made for you, you can technically make the stuff inside these bottles with chemicals that you buy from a ceramic art supply store. It's very, very easy. I have recipes on my own YouTube playlist and there's a lot of recipes floating around in the public domain. You can get recipes from Digital Fire, you can get recipes from Glazy. Hell, I I have my own playlist in which I give and test out recipes for you on YouTube. Not only are these glaze recipes extremely easy to find online, they're extremely easy to make if you have the recipe on hand. All you really have to do is get a certain amount of water, a certain amount of glaze minerals, mix them together following the recipe in detail, and boom, you got yourself a glaze. And the cool thing is once you start making your own glazes, you can kind of start to mess around with them and really control your artwork. You can technically make a clear base glaze, add a chemical that you know will make it a certain color, like Copper will usually make green. Cobalt will usually make some sort of blue. Red iron oxide can make a bunch of stuff, but as you would imagine, as per the name, red iron oxide will usually help you make red. But one thing that has always been a nuisance for those of us making our glazes by hand is how much water do we put in our glazes? The high majority of glazes that you're gonna find online, including the ones on glazy.com and Digital Fire, don't come with any specific milliliter of water inside of them. They don't tell you, and most old school potters either do the finger test or they just kinda go, mmm, yeah. That feels about right. And unfortunately, whenever you make a glaze, the recipe almost never comes out with a certain amount of water you need to put inside the glaze. This is where specific gravity comes in. As many of you probably know who make your own glazes, glaze isn't just like magical potter juice. It's actually glaze minerals that are technically suspended in water. Even the stuff that you buy in bottles technically is water mixed in with a bunch of glaze minerals and has a certain type of magical gum chemical to make it extra thick so you can either brush it on or do what you have to do to it depending on the type that you buy. This really isn't an issue for most companies that make glazes because they have it down packed. They have it down to a science. They know how much chemical, they know how exactly how much water, they know what type of water, whether it's purified or not. They know everything to get the most consistency out of their glazes so that their customers are happy. But when it comes to putting together your glazes, the amount of water that you put inside your glaze can literally make or break your glaze. So over time, people figured out an equation to measure the amount of water in your glaze versus the amount of glaze minerals in your glaze, because you have to remember they're not the same thing. This number is called the specific gravity of your glaze. The number that correlates to the specific gravity of your handmade glaze is extremely important. It can make or break a glaze, and I'm gonna be honest with you, half of the time it settles a lot of arguments in between potters. Imagine you gave your friend a recipe that you swear is super tight, only for your friend to figure out that you're a dirty potter liar because the glaze that you gave them didn't turn out blue or red at all. It turned out brown, which is not the color that we agreed upon. Before I learned to measure the specific gravity of my glazes, I would basically do the old potter's trick. I would mix up a glaze, stick my finger in the glaze, and if none of the glaze got on my finger or it dripped right off, making it super clear like this, it clearly had too much water in it. But if I took some of that water out in an attempt to make it thicker, put my finger in there and it stuck to my finger just a bit, well, that turned out pretty good. This would have passed to me. This clearly has enough water in it. But if my glaze was a little bit too thick and I stuck my finger in there, I can't even see through my finger. This is extremely, extremely thick. This is either a brushing glaze or I didn't put enough water in my glaze. Or some of the oldest potters would just kind of mix around their glaze, measure the resistance with their hand to go, yep, that feels about right. But in order to do that, you would have to have an extreme amount of familiarity with this one specific glaze, not to mention the rest of your glazes as well. I abandoned all of those techniques once friend of the channel, Sue, taught me how to measure specific gravity. She made an extremely strong case as to why specific gravity shouldn't only be measured for consistency, shouldn't only be measured so that you can pass down your glazes with accuracy, and for the effectiveness of your glaze, she also 
kind of teaches classes on this very subject. She also proved it to me by having me go through the same exact experiment here in my home studio. I tested a glaze with 1.1 specific gravity and 1.4 specific gravity, of which I will show you later. But for now, I'm gonna let Sue talk to you because she actually agreed to help me make this video. And seeing how she's a professional and she knows way more about what she's talking about on this subject, and I just, um, I make YouTube videos. Hey there, Dante's Dirty Potters. Um, today I wanted to talk about measuring specific gravity. Measuring specific gravity is a way to calculate the amount of water that we have in our glazes. So glazes are made of solid particles ground up into fine powders and they are suspended in water. So we have solid particles in water and specific gravity gives us a calculation that tells us what the proportion is of solid particles to water. And so when we have a glaze that has a higher proportion of water, then we often will get a thinner application. And when we have less water, we get a thicker application. So for example, this is Randy's red. And so this one has a higher specific gravity, less water. This one has a lower specific gravity and more water. The difference in color is quite significant uh, with the difference in application thickness. And so if we want to have consistent glaze results, then we need to make sure our water content is also consistent. And so in order to measure specific gravity, the best way that I have found to do so is by using a graduated cylinder. Um, I bought this on Amazon for under $10. So you stick the graduated cylinder on your scale, uh, zero your scale, and then fill your graduated cylinder with glaze. And then you take the grams and you divide it by the milliliters, and that will give you a number. So most glazes are gonna fall somewhere between 1.3 and 1.7. If you can remember that the specific gravity of water is one, then adding water to a glaze will bring the specific gravity down or closer to one. So say your specific gravity is 1.7, um, adding water will bring that number down and closer to one. So you can measure your specific gravity of how your glazes are now, and then the next time you go to glaze, you can make sure that the specific gravity is the same, and then that will make sure that your water content is the same, which will give you more consistent glaze application and more consistent results. Well, thank you, Sue. I appreciate your expertise. Thanks, Dante. Ever since Sue taught me how to calculate specific gravity, I not only tested all of my glazes to see what their gravity is, I did the same exact test that she showed you in that video just to make sure our results were both constant. And you know what? They were. You see these two test styles right here? These are both the same glaze that she showed you. These are both Randy's Red. Not only are these the same exact glaze, these are also the same exact clay body. The only difference is that this one on the left here is at 1.1 specific gravity, while the one here on the right is at 1.4 specific gravity, and it makes such a large difference. Let's imagine this, you're showing this glaze to a buddy of yours, and you go, hey, which one do you think is Randy's red? And he picks this one. Dang right, it's this one. This is the one that's red. This is what Randy's red is supposed to look like. Many of you will notice that it is actually red versus this over here, which is some kind of weird grayish blue that nobody wants whenever they make a recipe called Randy's Red. This is why measuring your specific gravity is so important. Keep in mind that these two are the same exact glaze on the same exact clay body. The only real difference is that one of these is at 1.1 specific gravity, while this one is at 1.4 specific gravity, meaning that it has less water in it. I know this doesn't really matter to the video, but if you look on the side right here, you can see where it really tried to be Randy's Red but it just couldn't do it. Now that I've shown you the importance of measuring your specific gravity, I'm gonna show you how to measure the specific gravity of your glaze. Step one, mix it up real good. Step number two, break out your scale that you probably have because you're making glazes. 
If you're making glaze without a gram scale, I don't eat, I just, like how? Grab yourself a graduated cylinder. I got this one on Amazon for about $10. It was delivered to my house in a couple of days. The reason we're using a graduated cylinder is because it usually has measurements on the side. We're gonna need these measurements. It's very important for the equation that we're gonna be doing. Make sure that you weigh out your graduated cylinder and remember to tear the weight off of it. You're not really measuring the weight of the graduated cylinder, so put it on your scale and just zero that out. Now choose the amount of glaze you're gonna be putting inside this graduated cylinder. It doesn't really matter the amount of glaze that you put in there. I personally just like to use rounded numbers, so I'm clearly not gonna use 375 and divide the grams by that. I'm just gonna pick 300, which, although it's hard to see on camera, should be about right here. So I'm now going to put 300 milliliters of glaze in here. Right? That is exactly 300 milliliters of liquid glaze, but the gram scale says 409.9. We're just gonna round that up to 410 just for convenience sake. Once you have those two numbers, the amount of weight in grams and the amount of liquid milliliters as far as this glaze goes, you can start calculating your specific gravity. All you have to do is divide the amount of grams by the milliliters. Let me just get my millennial calculator. It's my new out. girlfriend. First, we're gonna put in the amount of grams, which was 410 on the scale, and divide it by what we agreed upon previously was 300 milliliters of liquid glaze. And that comes out to 1.3 Six, 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 six. This number here, 1.3 and forever six, is the specific gravity of my Randy's red glaze right here. And that's essentially how you measure the specific gravity of your glaze. Potter tip. Technically speaking, the gravity of water will always be one. So if you're a little bit confused by the scale like I was when I first learned about this, remember, the closer to one that you get, the more watery your glaze is. This confused me for quite some time until Sue told me, just remember, water has a gravity of one on Earth, which means that the closer it is to one, the more watery it is. It seems kind of dumb to mention now because I just walked you through the entire process and explained all of this to you. But when you go off by yourself and do it again, you're going to realize, oh, I, I don't really rem What's a good gravity? I don't under is is this good? Is closer to one good? Is, 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 is two good? What happens when I get to two? Is that too much? Most of my glazes personally end up being somewhere in between 1.35 and 1.6, but that's just my comfort level for my glaze. Every glaze, of course, based on experience, will end up being at a certain specific gravity based on how you want it to function and your experience with it. For example, my crystal glazes that I just recently developed are all like 1.5, which of course is 0.1 heavier than my Randy's red, or at least what I would like it to be. So I have to remember that whenever I make the glaze and I measure it in my graduated cylinder and gram scale. You might even have glazes that you've given up on, but you just need to take a little bit of water out and measure your gravity. Extra Potter tip. Most people who hand make their glazes already understand how glazes are made and how they operate. And as I said earlier, it's not made out of magical potter juice. It's made out of glaze minerals, which are finely ground up and a bit of water. This means that technically, because water is lighter gravity than glaze minerals, whenever you put them into a glaze suspension or whenever you mix them into a glaze, if you leave them alone long enough, Technically speaking, the minerals are almost always going to float to the bottom while the water is left at the top. If you find that your glaze is a little bit too close to the number one, meaning it has a little too much water in it, you can always leave it alone for a couple days, come back and siphon off some of the water. It's extremely easy and this will increase the gravity of your glaze if you're having worries about it. There's no need to make an entirely new batch. You just have to have a little bit of patience. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I just really wanted to get across to you the importance of measuring the specific gravity or for lack of a better term, just the amount of water in your glaze. I didn't know about this for like three or four years while I was making glaze. And you can imagine my frustration when I made batch after batch after batch of Ron Roy's High Gloss Black, of Randy's Red, of my Lumos, and I had no idea why they would randomly fritz or not work. But over time, Sue taught me how to measure my specific gravity, and now it's in every single one of my notes. In fact, I won't even 
even test out a glaze unless someone has given me the specific gravity of that glaze first in which it should work. This immediately clears up all arguments I've ever had with Potter friends who were like, that glaze doesn't work. Dude, I swear it worked like four days ago. I literally have the test dials on my Instagram to prove it. I don't know what you did, but you did it wrong. Which of course, once they show me their test dial, which is completely different color from mine, I then have to go over all the things that I think could have gone wrong. Did I not put enough water? Did I put too much water? Was the water not pure enough? Did they change pits? Did they make sure that, are, are, the, are the chemicals not pure enough? Did I mix up the chemicals? Did I put the right amount of grams in there? Did I not mix it up well enough? Was did my kiln not fire to cone five or cone six? Did it not vitrify all the way? Is it the clay body I'm using? What is it? But this entire time, it's just because I didn't measure the gravity of my glaze and pass that down in my notes. And technically speaking, this is like one of three methods you can do to measure the amount of water in your glaze. I just find the graduated cylinder and gram scale method much more accurate because technically I know there's inevitably gonna be somebody in the comments below who's like, um, you don't have to use a graduated cylinder. Um, I actually use a hydrometer. And to be fair, you can use a hydrometer. A little bit before this, I used a hydrometer, but I would sometimes get different numbers. I just find it much easier to do the gram scale equation with a graduated cylinder. It's far more accurate, I could write it down in all my glaze notes but if you like the hydrometer way you know what I'm not I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life but for those of you who watched the video up to this point um, can you please find anyone in the comments below who's inevitably going to make that comment and just timestamp this part for them because they almost assuredly did not watch the video to this part you forgot to mention hydrometers BAM get timestamped on but thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below. The new podcast that Lindsay M. Dillon and I host, my website if you want to buy any of my work, the Instagram, the Facebook, all, all of the linkity links and all the clickety clicks. You guys are smart enough to know where they all are by now. They're all in the description below. If you enjoy these kind of videos and you find this information helpful, don't forget to click subscribe. That way you never miss a video. I love your Dirty Potter faces. Good luck on your next art project, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. If I ever have an apprentice and I teach them how to make glaze and they don't put the specific gravity with every single one of their glazes that I show them how to make or that they make, I'm just going to disavow them. Like later in history, I'm like, no, I never taught that person. I don't know what, I don't know who they are.